welcome to this Video Song Frontier video. My name is Jay Wakefield and today I would like to talk a wee bit about a pet peeve of mine. You see, retro computer collecting is something that quite a lot of people are doing. Now, while a lot of people will actually set up a retro computer to use with an operating system that it might have been designed to run originally. There are a few people that will just install the latest version of an operating system onto a retro computer that it will technically support. Or even, you know, or even maybe one or two versions of Windows kind of, that, you know, above what will have been around when said computer was designed and built. Now, <clears throat> I understand if you've only got the one retro machine and you're wanting to use it with a version of Windows, you know, I, I can completely understand that, you know. If, let's say you've got a Pentium 100, but you really, for whatever reason, want to use Windows 98 and that's the only old machine you have, then, well, fair play to you. I mean, that's... I mean, I still wouldn't recommend it, but um, I can understand why you would do it. What I don't get is people who have a whole collection of different machines and yet still kind of choose to put systems onto machines that they really weren't designed for. You know, things like running, things like running Windows 98 on a non-MMX on a non -MMX enabled Pentium, something like a 133, or like I said, yeah, even a 100 running Windows XP on a Pentium 2 or an early Pentium 3. Now, I understand that when these systems originally came out, a lot of people will have been quite eager to run them. Um, and back then, new computers were very expensive to get a hold of. So, you know, again, I can understand why people will have run operating systems that um, could have been considered a wee bit too much for their computers, when they first came out due to the fact that, um, you know, like I said, computers are expensive. expensive. I mean, I've done it. Windows uh, Windows XP running on my 2001 custom built, which had a 633 MHz seller on with 128 megs of RAM. But um, <clears throat> what we have here is the Toshiba T1910. Now, some of you will remember this. This is... Um, this is a monochrome laptop. It's got a 486 SX33, um, which, for those of you who don't know, don't know, means it's clocked at th 33 megahertz. It has four megabytes, yes, megabytes of memory, and a 210 megabyte hard disk. And what I've done with this machine is I've actually installed Windows 95 RTM on it. In fact, I've installed the upgrade version. I clean installed the upgrade version, um, which is possible to do. It'll ask you for your Windows 3.1 disks to kind of verify your eligibility for the upgrade, which I gave it. And um, this version of Windows 95 is quite unique in that it does not come with Internet Explorer installed as standard. Perfect. Sorry about that, guys. Billy interrupted me because he can't sleep. He said to me, Jay, do you have anything to make you sleep? So I said, what about a black and white laptop running a version of Windows that's completely inappropriate for it? Because I'll tell you something, setting this thing up made me tired as well. <laughs> Go on, what were you saying? That's not going to make me sleepy. It's going to make me nauseous. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh well, um, I will say one thing, the NoCom LX would never run Windows 95. The only way it can run is through, um, is, well, you would need a priest. Number two, no priest would actually do such a thing. Yeah. Anyway, now before I do go ahead with this video. Um, I would like to actually say 
that, um, yes, I have seen videos with people running, you know, really stupidly new versions of Windows with older equipment. Yes, I have seen Windows 7 running on a 450 megahertz Pentium 3. And yes, I have seen the Power Mac Galaxy running Windows Vista on, I can't remember if it was a 233 or a 266 megahertz Dell Latitude CPI. I think his might have actually been the 233 model, believe it or not. Which is Pentium 2, Pentium 2, 233 megahertz. Don't know how much RAM was in it, but yeah. I mean, obviously it takes about 10 minutes to start up in both cases. This is a wee bit more appropriate, as this does actually match, or in some cases exceed, the system re requirement. Now, having only 4 megs of RAM, however, will hamper its performance and will stop you from being able to actually run too many applications at once. Anyway, let's see if we can get this thing going. Also a couple of other issues that um, are quite entertaining that will pop up. Oh, and I would like to actually mention that once this video is finished, I will be reinstalling DOS 6 and Windows 3.1. Jay Wakefield has something um, that we like to call sanity. Okay. So, for some reason, the first time the Windows 95 splash screen displays, it displays perfectly. But the second time it displays, as you can see, it glitches. Quite badly, actually. And it looks terrible. Yeah, but then again, it's always, this machine's always had um, issues with kind of text mode and things like that. It's, it's always been a bit of a bugbear. So, okay, this is actually starting up quite a lot quicker than I would have expected. But, as you can see now, it's actually struggling to get to the desktop. There we go. But, I mean, the hard disk light is kind of going on for a fair while afterwards. So, we are at the desktop. That didn't actually take too long to start up. So, let's go to my computer, right-click. Yep, there we go. <laughs> That's how long it took to draw that menu. Um, okay, now click Properties. Um, there. This is just a simple little dialog box. 80486, 4 megs of RAM. Um, can have a look at the hardware in here. But like I said, completely simple. It's only got a standard display adapter, VGA, floppy disk controller, hard disk controller, monitor, just kind of a four, uh, 640 by 480 job. Um, now I have installed some applications, some Windows 95 applications on here. And just click to start Microsoft Works. Like I said, I mean, it needs an, a, thir a thir uh, 386 DX to run. I'm running a 486 SX, so it's basically the same thing. Don't worry about Jake trying this with Windows 98 because it won't even run. Oh no. Well, certainly not in 4 megabytes of RAM, it won't. <laughs> I don't have a default printer, that's why that's came up. So as you can see, that took quite a while 
to start up works and actually go into a blank document there. Slowly, slowly wins the race, except on the Windows interface. Almost right. What, interface and race? Yeah. I'd say it rhymed. Oh. <laughs> now, let's see if I can start up Microsoft Word. Now I think Office for Windows 95 really said that it needs 8 megs of RAM to run. But it will just about run anyway. But I've only really tested it. Look at that, it's having to draw. You actually kind of see it like doing a wipe up effect and drawing the uh, splash screen for Microsoft Word. What I do like about this is it looks like Windows does in a lot of textbooks because it is black and white. Oh dear. We've got to wait now for the text to type itself. <laughs> there we go. Um, hi, I'm running Windows, Microsoft Word for Windows 95 on the Toshiba T910. It has a 486SX33 with 4 megabytes of RAM and a 210 MB hard disk drive. Now let's see if I can insert a picture. <coughs> I do have some pictures on here. Um, I was using PaintShop Pro 4 earlier to take some screenshots and I've got to say that... That nearly killed me! <coughs> now this is quite interesting. I can't get the insert picture dialog box to come up. But when I'm going to insert file, cluttering away at the hard drive. There we go. Nah, it's, it's not going to do it. Okay, well, let's open up Excel instead. Oh, dear. I'm afraid to see what will happen if you try to open PowerPoint. <laughs> see, one thing I will say is that 16 colors on this display, really, it really doesn't matter because it's a monochrome display. Yeah. Let's see if I can make a chart. Alright, I'm going to see if the IntelliSense works on fell down. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Let's see if I can make a graph. So, Fel, Kendra, Amy, Cletus. 
Let's have a look how many things each one has sold. So I'm just going to type numbers randomly. Oh, bad. Um, this, uh, the summer months were not kind to Kendra at all with sales. see about uh, totaling some of these up equals some beat. <laughs> there we go um, and then what I will do is I will fill right equals some b E2 and then I have a grand total there. So what I'm going to do is I will make a wee graph using the chart wizard. Oh, come on. There we go. Yep, so I've got a range for the graph. And I think I will make it into a, a 3D bar graph. So as you can see, it's actually taking its time to actually draw the graph. Data series in columns, that's absolutely fine. Chart title, sales. And then we can finish up. And there is the graph. And then for no reason at all, let's copy it back into Microsoft Word. As you can see, it really is taking its sweet old time to actually sw switch the document. Right, and then we're going to go Control V to paste it in. And then it really is going to take its time. Hey Billy, should we try PowerPoint? <laughs> oh, you're brave enough. <laughs> well, it's taking time. It's taking a long time to actually copy a graph uh, out of Excel into Microsoft Word. I say go for it as long as you have access to a good fire extinguisher. I don't. Mm. But the machine, uh, okay. the machine is not heating up at all. That's testament to these far east sexes. <laughs> Solid as anything. Ceramics, so they're fade free. So 
So if you fit them to your Porsche, you, you can slow it, you can stop it really well. <coughs> In fact, don't. So actually, you know, on retrospect, this has not done, you know, overly badly. But, I mean, th this is kind of just office tasks. I mean, we, we saw how long it took to get these two programs to kind of work. And I've just set it to close and, oh, now we've got a save as dialogue box. So you've got to wonder what it would be like running games on Windows 95. Ouch. <clears throat> so I will say that, um, you know, if you had a machine like this, I mean, a lot of people do actually do word processing on very old computers, even to this day. If you wanted something like this as just a word processor and nothing more, you know, and you absolutely felt you needed the Windows 95 interface, then yes, it would work but it would be frustratingly slow. If however you're wanting to do a wee bit more, you know, um, and you want stuff to actually happen, you know, quite quickly, I would go and install Windows 3.1. You know, something that the machine is actually designed for. And we can see even on some Windows 3.1 apps, it will run quite slowly. I mean, my Packard Bell Legend Multimedia, when I first got that, that was a that was a 486, 33. And, you know, I did find that to be extremely slow. And I'm, I'm saying all this while I'm saving, saying a document. I'm saving a document while I'm saying all this. And closing out of Microsoft Word. Think of how slow it would be if you're saving to a floppy disk. Oh, aye. And what you've got to remember as well, this is a clean install of Windows. So as a Windows install becomes more and more cluttered, it slows down anyway. But I mean, yes, you can. I have seen Office 97 running on a 486, but... Just don't. So I've not saved the Excel workbook. And now it's just going to attempt to close out of Microsoft Excel. But, um... I've decided not to bother with PowerPoint because I think I was able to make the point quite well there. Um, but because this is a monochrome display, well, this this display supports reverse video. So who would like to see Windows 95 in reverse video? Enthusiastic response. <laughs> um. or, see if I'd have installed the setup uh, th uh, setup utility on here. I could have done that without even having to reboot. So what I'll do is I'll shut this down. And despite the fact that this computer does have advanced power management in so much as it can suspend, it can't actually use the APM function to switch off the machine. So, access a BIOS, access the uh, BIOS setup utility on an older Toshiba, hold down escape, and then switch it on.
and then it forces itself. You, you've literally forced an error. And this is the official way to actually get into setup on a Toshiba. You've actually got to... Um, you actually have to um, force it into error. Okay. So now it's in reverse 64 levels. So it's very white. Starting Windows 95. <laughs> it even glitches in reverse as well. Look at that. That's just diabolical. Yeah, that... Oof. So this is what Windows 95 looks like in reverse. This was never meant to be done like this. See, Windows 3.1 looks a lot better in reverse video. It just does. Get used to it. Suck it up. <clears throat> yeah, suck it up and deal with it. Windows 3.1 looks a lot better in reverse reverse video than what Windows 95 does. In fact, Windows 95 just looks awful. And look at this, Microsoft Word for Windows 95. And this, this actually reminds me of my uh, first ever laptop. That used to be in reverse video until I discovered the BIOS option that would actually put it right. And obviously because it had a dead CMOS battery, it, you know, that, yeah. <laughs> Look at this, I mean, I can't even run Windows 95 in the white on black colour schemes. It's, um, this for me is just, and, and this white title bar, what is this, Windows 10? Let's just face it, when it comes to Windows 95, you need colour. <laughs> Really? Yes, I would say so. <laughs> I mean, it's. I mean, I could have. I mean, I was thinking, oh, shall I run some games on here to see how well they run? But I mean, I won't even. You know, I wouldn't even be able to. You know, play them. I wouldn't even be able to see them on the screen, even in the even with the video the right way round. Oh, I like I like that. When you shut down Windows ninety five, you everything on the screen is hidden behind a white sheen. I like that. Oh yeah, and don't try playing Skyrim's Christmas special on that. Um, funny, uh, funny story about that, Billy. That was something that I was never actually planning to do. Mm. I mean, reverse video is perfect for MS-DOS, I'll be honest here. It is. It's, it's the best thing that you could do with it. But um, for, you know, anything else, you know, for Windows, GUIs, don't do it, kids. It's not worth the hassle. You know, you'll just be leading yourself down a road of, down a life of crime. You're, you won't be able to, you know, maintain your grades will drop. You'll fail all your exams. And then you it will all end when you are sacked at age 30 from, uh, I don't know, from, from being a rubber band tester. <laughs> that was always the worst job in the Vino, rubber band tester. <laughs> I never, I... There we go. So, I guess with all that said, I think, um, I will actually conclude this video. So, uh, Billy, do you have anything to say about this? Speechless.
He can't even say a word. <laughs> you there, Billy? <laughs> it's made him disappear. I can hear a clicking of a mouse. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna head off now and I'm gonna head off now and actually F disk this computer's hard drive and just install DOS and, and be kind to it. Um you know, give it a, a nice hot cup of tea and a saucer of saucer of milk by the fire or something. Um <laughs> Because it's went above and beyond today, it really has. Um, but um, this is why it's really not a good idea to run a version of Windows on a computer that only just kind of matches or only just exceeds its system requirements. If your computer doesn't even, if your computer falls short of some of the system requirements, don't even bother. Don't, don't even think about it. Just don't. Okay? Anyway, thank you for watching this video, Song Frontier video, and I hope you'll all join me for my next video. Cheerio, bye.